The Insta360 app has been completely changed. It's not easy to use or find your way around, particularly for beginners. In this video, I'm gonna show you the most important features you need to know, and also several different ways that you can edit your clips. And if you're struggling with your 360 camera and you want to learn how to shoot and edit awesome 360 videos, then check out my Insta360 course below. You can edit via the camera's Wi-Fi, but this will mean having to leave your camera on. So the best thing to do is to download your clips first to the app. To do this, connect your camera to the app by pressing this icon here. Press join. Once the camera is connected, then press album at the bottom. Make sure you're on X5 at the top. So select the tick icon and then select the clips that you want to download to your phone. Now select download at the bottom. You can check the status of your downloaded clips at the top here. Once the clips are downloaded, you can then turn off your camera. So once you've selected your clip to edit, you're taken to this screen here. You can play your clip and pause it by tapping in the middle of the screen. Scroll through your clip, you can slide your finger on this white line at the bottom of the screen here. But be careful not to touch any of the icons either side of this line. If your clip is short and you just want to trim it and make some simple changes, then you can do that on this page without having to add keyframes. So first select your aspect ratio at the top here. So you have the most popular aspect ratio, which is 16 by nine, which is the standard landscape view. And you have nine by 16, which is your portrait view. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it in portrait view, seeing as we're playing it out on a mobile phone. So next you want to trim your clip. So select the scissor icon here, and then position this line to the beginning of your clip, where you want your clip to start. So we'll just trim the first few seconds. Then we move this line in at the end to where we want the clip to finish. So usually you'll move this end point in to get rid of the scrappy bits at the end of your clip where you're usually adjusting your selfie stick or bringing it back in to stop recording. And you can move your shot around with your finger and whichever way the shot is facing, that is the angle that will export if you decided to export your video from this point. And you can also zoom in and zoom out of your shot here. So we zoom out a little bit here so we can see the view of the full architecture. And then select the tick icon when you're happy. If you want to reset your trim points, you can press the reset icon here. You can also select some custom views here as well by selecting the custom button at the bottom. So select custom and then we can move from selfie view and then it detects a selfie so it detects you in the shot or you can go to a forward view and this detects the forward lens on the camera. But we don't want this shot to face directly forwards, we want to move it over towards the middle of this mini amphitheater. And as well as being able to move your finger around to adjust the viewing angle, you can also select the back arrow here and then go to the zoom tool here, press zoom and then you'll have some other options come up where you can change your viewing angle. So you can go from narrow, linear, mega view or even select tiny planet. So I would select mega view and then fine tweak the view by pinching in and out with your thumb and finger. You can then export your clip by selecting the yellow export icon here at the top. And we look at this in a bit more detail later in the video. You'll probably want to do more than this though with your clip. So what else can we do from this screen? If you select record at the bottom here, this feature is a fun way to edit your videos and still gives you a lot of control of the camera angle without having to add keyframes. So using this mode, you can hold your phone in front of you and when you press start recording, the video will then start playing and whichever direction you move the phone in, this is the angle that will show up on your final video. And this is much easier to do this if you're stood up so you can easily move around or if you're sat in a spinning chair. So let's press start recording and as it plays, you can see that as I move the phone, the clip moves around live. So I can change the angle by moving the phone itself or I can swipe with my finger as the shot plays or here there's a joystick icon and when I start recording, I can use the joystick to move the shot up or down or left or right. And this can be done really smoothly 
and you can create some really nice movements. And all of the moves that I did, whether it was with the joystick or swiping on the screen or moving my body around, moving the phone around, are all recorded live and end up in the final video. To make things easier, you can also use one of the custom views again. So you can select selfie, you can select forward view, but this time you can even do a 360 degree spin or a 180 degree spin in either direction. And this makes your moves a lot smoother. And you simply select stop recording to finish your recording. Another way to edit your footage is to select the editor icon. So select the back arrow at the top, then press confirm, press the cross, and now select editor at the bottom here. This is great for longer clips where you want to choose various shots from one video clip. So even though this clip is one minute long, I'll be able to choose say six different shots from this one clip. So the first thing you do is to select your clips. So scroll with your finger back to the start of the shot. Now at the start, where you want your first clip to start from, we press play and then we press frame cut. You now drag your finger along to where you want the clip to end. So we just make this a short clip and then we'll select confirm clip. And you can repeat this as many times as you want and you can select different views. So we do a selfie view, select frame cut, press play, press pause and then confirm clip slide along a bit more and now we go to custom 360 view and this means that I can swipe around wherever I want and the entire image so let's go for a tiny planet shot so to do that we just pinch on the screen and then we frame it up with our finger we press frame cut play the video pause and then press confirm clip and we could do this as many times as we want so all of this has been done without adding keyframes we've either swiped around to choose a dedicated angle or we've used the custom presets so now we've selected our clips we can now choose edit and export at the bottom here now you can see all of the clips that we selected appear at the bottom on the timeline. So this section here where all the clips play is referred to as the timeline. And this is the story editor page. So when we play our clips, they will now play one after the other. Now if we want to move a clip to a different part of the timeline, we can select the clip and then we drag it with our finger and then this moves it to a different position. If we select the white line in between each clip, so one at a time, we'll select this one at the end. This then brings up various transitions. So a transition is how one clip changes into the next clip. And there are dozens to choose from here. And then when you're happy, you press the tick icon. And even at this stage, we can also change the angle of each clip if we want to fine tune it. So let's select this clip here. And if I wanted to come wider, then I'd pinch on the screen. And then because I've pinched, the software knows that I've made a change, so I now have to select Update View. So select the tick icon, and that view has now been updated and saved. Or if you went to change the view and you weren't happy, you could just go to Discard Update. You can also add new clips by selecting the plus icon here. And then you can select clips from your album. You can also add music by selecting Music here. You can also change the speed of the clip by selecting here and you can color grade your clips by selecting the color icon here. And with most of these options you can also select apply to all. So once you've made the changes to speed or to the color or the exposure you can then apply that effect to all of your clips. And if you have GPS overlay so stats like distance and speed then you can add your stats here and link it to whichever device you use for your stats. And as always, at any point, you can export your video by selecting the yellow export icon in the top right hand corner. However, you can also continue editing by selecting go to more edits. 
In here, you can add titles by selecting text stickers here. And then you select text, which will give you a default text that you can change. So holiday. And then select the tick icon when you're finished. Or if we just go back, we can select templates. So we could select a preset template. So summer, for example. And then with your finger, you can move the text around on the screen. And now you can see on the timeline that we've got a new section that's appeared here. And this is where we've added our text. So we have a text section in the timeline. And we've got the same icons either end that are our trim tools like we've seen before. So we can trim how long or short the title is just by dragging in the start and end point of the title. And to go back from this section, we can press the back arrow here. And then again, press it again. And then we're back to this main section. So also here we can add an effect. So press the effect icon and then press it again. So this can add a special effect to your video. And I suggest that you don't overdo this here. Less is more and you won't always need an effect. But if there's a particular bit of your video that you think warrants it, then by all means experiment. So to come out of here, we select the down arrow and then the back arrow and then the back arrow again. And now for all of these clips that we've looked at, we can select 360 reframe. Now within the 360 reframe section, for each clip, we could use the record feature that we looked at earlier and adjust the clip using the live record mode. Or you can select tracking, where it will track the subject in your clip. Or you can select movement. And what movement will do is that it will add a special move to the clip that you've selected. So there's a little pulse, a little zoom in and a little zoom out. And when you're happy, press the tick icon. And that little zoom in and zoom out actually worked quite well, but don't overdo these effects because it really can ruin your videos. And you can also add a multi-view split screen or a picture in picture. In this scenario, it's used the same shot, but I think that's because we're not using a 360 image. We've reframed the image to one direction. But what multi-view would usually do with a 360 image is that you'd be able to look in two different ways. You'd have two camera angles playing at the same time. And again, whichever you've decided to do, you can press the tick icon when you're finished. But we don't want to keep this, so we'll select the cross icon. Are you sure you want to cancel this action? Confirm. So now it goes back to the standard video. So what I've been doing here with this video is just demonstrating the various features. But by the time you get to this point, you'll have a completed video. So now we can go to the export icon at the top. So the default export settings are 1080. So to change this and get a higher resolution, we want to select here. And then the highest resolution preset that we've got is on YouTube. So we select YouTube and then we can export at 4K 30 frames per second. So now we'll look at adding keyframes and we do this from the main screen on the app. So why would we want to add a keyframe? Well, up until now, we've looked pretty much in one fixed direction. Even though we can select that direction, that direction doesn't move once we've selected it. So what happens with a keyframe is that you can change the direction of the shot within one shot. So you could start looking left and then end up looking right. You could start in front of you and then turn the camera around and look towards you all within one particular shot. And this is achieved using keyframes. And every time you add a keyframe, you're telling the software that you want something to change. So you're telling it to move in a different direction. So let's go back with the back arrow and then the cross and then the back arrow again. We'll select our clip Pause the video. So select the keyframe icon here to get started. And then this takes us to the story editor layout that we saw earlier. So again, we can change the angle of our shot by swiping around with our fingers or pinching with our thumb and forefinger to create a wider or a tighter shot. So to zoom in or zoom out. So let's start on a wide shot. And then when we're happy, we'll add a keyframe by selecting the keyframe icon here. So this will be our starting shot. So we've told the software that this is where we want to start by adding a keyframe. We'll then press play for five seconds. 
press pause because we've gone slightly off here. So now I'm going to reframe it and zoom in. And then we press the keyframe icon again because at this point we want the software to change the shot. So it will now change from the last keyframe to this keyframe. And then if we scroll along the timeline, we press play and then we see how it transitions from this keyframe to the next. So it slowly zooms in. So now play the clip again by pressing the play button. So we play for five seconds, but now I'm going to pan around to show a shot of me walking. And it's a little bit far away, so I'll zoom in a little bit as well. And then once you're happy with the frame, select the keyframe icon here. So now let's go back. So starts wide, zooms in to the next keyframe point and then pans around towards me. Like so. So then you repeat this process over and over again until you get to the end of your clip. So a couple of tips here to undo and delete your last move, you can press this icon here. And if you want to delete a keyframe, then move the timeline along until this white line appears over the keyframe and it turns yellow. And then you can select this keyframe icon here with the minus symbol next to it, and then that will delete the keyframe. And of course you can add more keyframes, you can add less keyframes, you can increase the duration in between keyframes or decrease the duration. It doesn't really matter. All I'm doing here is demonstrating to you how to use these tools. There's a lot to take in here, so keep practicing one thing at a time and just decide which style of editing you prefer to use inside the app. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And if you're struggling with your X5, but you want to make awesome 360 videos, then check out my 360 course in the description below. For more X5 tips, you can watch this video next and I'll see you over there.